Through all this is history now. With more than 10 years having passed by, some crucial questions remain unresolved. You might have heard that the air defense on 9-11 failed completely. The official explanation is that nobody imagined something like this and that the military therefore had to improvise. However, the facts don't back this claim. On the contrary, the flight routes of the fighter jets show a pattern of deliberate diversion. Let's remember. Four planes were hijacked. After the first crash into the World Trade Center, fighter jets were scrambled. But evidence suggests that these fighters were diverted from New York as plane number two approached the city. Furthermore, it's a proven fact that fighter jets were diverted again from Washington, just as plane number three approached the Pentagon and even once more as plane number four was heading straight towards the Capitol. Who did this and why? To clarify, it will not be claimed here that fighter jets could have shot down those planes, for there was no shoot-down order issued at the time. The real question is why they didn't even reach the airliners at all. Because if the fighters had reached those planes, we would at least know today who controlled them, which we still don't know for sure. Let's now look at the details. Two Air Force bases sent fighter jets while the hijackings occurred. Otis and Langley. As just mentioned, the fighters from both bases were diverted to fly detours, delaying their arrival over New York and Washington significantly. For better understanding, let's reconstruct first the combined flight paths of United 175, the second hijacked plane to crash into the World Trade Center, and the fighter jets starting from Otis. 8.14, United 175 takes off from Boston. 8.42, Last radio communication with United 175, the hijacking starts in the following minutes. 847, United 175 changes transponder code twice. This timing is remarkable since American 11 had crashed into the Bell Trade Center just seconds before at 846. 851, United 175 deviates from assigned course. 852, fighter jets take off from Otis Air Force Base following an alert regarding the hijacking of American 11. 8.58, United 175 turns toward New York. 9.03, United 175 crashes into South Tower of the World Trade Center. The Otis fighters' jets are still over the ocean, apparently out of reach. 9.09, fighter jets turn to the east, away from New York. 9.13, fighter jets turn second time, back towards New York. 9.25, fighter jets reach New York. So far for the official account, now a few simple observations. First, the normal flight time from Otis to New York would be 10 to 12 minutes, according to the military. But on 9-11, as we just saw, the fighters needed 33 minutes instead. From 8.52 to 9.25, that's three times longer. Obviously, this had something to do with a strange loop over the ocean. As the loop was apparently flown only after the second crash into the World Trade Center, one could argue that the whole issue might be of little relevance. But let's hold on for a minute, we'll see if this is true. Second, we have no definitive account for the circumstances that led to this remarkable flight path. Though there are tape recordings of most of the talk at the operations floor of NORAD's Northeast Air Defense Sector, the precise audio channels for the communication with the Otis fighter pilots were allegedly not recorded on 9-11. Even more disturbing, we have some indication that the timestamp of the radar reconstruction of the Otis flight path might be wrong, meaning the whole mission could possibly have been flown a few and important minutes earlier than officially claimed. The crucial point here is the time of the first alarm call to the military that morning. According to the 9-11 Commission, this was a call from Boston Air Traffic Control Center to NORAD's Northeast Sector at 8.38. Immediately after this, at about 8.39, Colin Scoggins, military liaison at Boston Center, called NORAD again to help them track American 11. In this call, Scoggins said, The plane is 20 miles south of Albany. The problem. This timing makes no sense. Because American 11 was already over 80 miles south of Albany at 8.39, as the official reconstruction by the National Transportation Safety Board shows. 
At the time, it was also much closer to New York than to Albany, meaning nobody would even mention Albany in connection with American Eleven at 8.39. Several authors and journalists have asked Scoggins about this apparent contradiction to the official account. But he stays by his words, saying that this was puzzling him too, and there were a few minutes, quote, that never matched up. As Scoggins is a well-respected source, cited by many authors and also by the 9-11 Commission, we have to consider the possibility that the call was actually taking place earlier. We have to consider that it very likely took place when American 11 was really 20 miles south of Albany, which was at 8.31, meaning 8 minutes earlier than officially claimed. This, by the way, would further mean that the whole military response to the hijacking, including the Otis scramble, took place that same eight minutes earlier. So that the first fighter jets on 9-11 might have started not at 8.52, but at 8.44 already. It's speculation, of course, or more correct, an educated guess. But anyway, let's see how this would look like in connection with the flight path of United 175. 8.44 fighter jets take off from Otis Air Force Base. 847 United 175 changes transponder code twice. 851 United 175 deviates from assigned course. 858 United 175 turns toward New York, fighter jets just a few minutes away. 901 fighter jets turn away from New York. 903 United 175 crashes into South Tower. 905 Fighter jets turn second time back toward New York. 917. Fighter jets reach New York. Now, this looks really troubling. If it happened like this, it would mean the fighters were turned away from New York right before the crash of United 175. Considering this, it's all the more disturbing to remember that the audio channels for the communication with the Otis fighter pilots were allegedly not recorded on 9-11 and that the Otis jets cockpit voice recorder and heads-up display data where both, quote, 9-11 commission staffer, not accurately timestamped. We have to ask, who diverted the jets? Now let's reconstruct the combined flight paths of American 77, the third hijacked plane to crash into the Pentagon, and the fighter jets starting from Langley. To make it clear, the following flight times represent the official account again. 8.20, American 77 takes off from Washington. 8.46. American 11 crashes into North Tower of the World Trade Center. 8.54. American 77 deviates from assigned course. 8.56. American 77 disappears from radar while slowly turning 180 degrees. 9.03. United 175 crashes into South Tower of the World Trade Center. America is under attack. 9.09. Langley fighter jets on battle stations only. No scramble order. No fighter jet activity at Andrews, the airbase only 10 miles from Washington. 924. Langley fighter jets receive scramble order, but still no scramble order for Andrews jets. 927. Vice President Cheney receives message in the White House, the plane is 50 miles out. Still no scramble order to Andrews jets. 930. Fighter jets take off from Langley Air Force Base, are diverted to the east over the ocean. 937. American 77 crashes into Pentagon, fighter jets still fly wrong direction. 938. Fighter jets turn north one minute after Pentagon crash. 941. Fighter jets turn northwest towards Washington area. 950. Fighter jets turn southwest away from Washington. 959. Fighter jets reach Washington. Again, this looks really troubling. First, the fighters were sent wrong direction exactly till American 77 crashed into target. The official explanation by the 9-11 Commission says that air traffic controllers at Langley had sort of a standard flight plan, sending all jets generally to the east, and that this standardized eastern heading somehow replaced the original North scramble order. A doubtful claim. Because how should that have happened? The pilots knew the original scramble order, they knew which direction NORAD wanted them to fly. And then they somehow forgot? So again we have to ask, who diverted the fighter jets? Second, just as United 93 was approaching Washington, the Langley fighters were diverted again away from the capital. 
This episode is completely missing in the 9-11 Commission report, even though the detour is clearly visible on the radar. 9-11 Commission staff member Miles Kara claimed in 2011 that a NORAD controller had just erroneously transposed two digits of the coordinates he gave to the Langley pilots that moment, 3825 North, 7702 West, instead of 3852 North. But anyway, this is in both cases a latitude way south of Washington. Then why was such a new heading, diverting the fighters again from the capital, given it all at 950? The radar data made public through a FOIA request in 2007 shows a likely explanation. The start of a plane from Andrews at 944, circling over Washington and then flying south. As the radar picture shows, the Langley fighters were turning apparently to follow and intercept that plane. Again, neither the 9-11 Commission report nor Miles Kara identify or even mention that plane. As independent researchers found out via FOIA requests in 2008, it was a military Boeing 747, a so-called E-4B, or doomsday plane. Why did the 9-11 Commission keep completely silent about this? And for what apparently classified purpose did this flying electronic command center actually take off, some 20 minutes after a nationwide ground stop had been declared? To find out more about this, and to check the sources of this video, author read this article, Anomalies of the Air Defense on 9-11, published in October 2012 at the Journal of 9-11 Studies. Please share this video.